Hi everyone, it's Luton here, and today we're going to be looking at LMGs and the roles in which they can be used. Now LMGs often get a bit of bad press because they often are compared to assault rifles too much. The point is that, you know, they're very different pieces of kit at the end of the day, and I think when you use an LMG in the right situation it can be a very strong tool for your team. So with that in mind, the first thing you want to be thinking of is how to set up, suppress and snipe your enemy with the support of your team. And let's not forget, they're in the support class. The clue is in the name. You're supporting your team. You're not designed to be a front runner with this piece of kit. It's a very strong, powerful backup tool to provide that extra support to your team. So you want to find a good location to set up your bipod LMG because, as I say, we're not using a foregrip, we're not running around with the gun. And um, so I'm preparing my sight here. I'm going to be dropping a grenade just over here. That's going to clear this tree out for me. As so. And that gives me a much better view across the whole area here. I can see much better. Now people might say, okay, well, you know, you'd be in a situation like this, you will instantly get sniped. You would think so, wouldn't you? However, it seems to be that actually I am the person sniping the snipers in this round, as you'll see. Now what I've got here is a bipod M240B with a 3.5 scope on. 3.5 scope is very nice because you can use it at a lot of different ranges. If you've got the eyes for it, you can pick off targets at very long range, and it also has enough magnification that you can go at close range. It does have a slightly large large uh, scope but it's manageable depending on how you play the game and what your general awareness is. The other key with this scope is you know you don't want to stay zoomed in all the time but as I say I've got a nice buffer because of where I'm sitting. I'm not up the front I don't need to worry about necessarily engaging those targets straight away. The other benefit with sitting at very very long range and there you go you see perfectly dealing with targets right there. The benefit of sitting slightly behind your team is, is multiple. Uh, for one thing, it means that a lot of enemy targets will not necessarily be focused on you because they will be focusing on the guys up the front and trying to engage them first. So it means that you have the ability to shoot through all of that and get onto the targets. You also provide a strong role for your team here by a kind of backup support player. Which means, and we'll see this in the next video as well, that our guys are up front creating a kind of intense frontline buffer. And then as we are sitting back into the second position here, we're providing a backup support. So if those guys get taken out, I am the next role, the next position, allowing those guys to respawn and get back in the fight. And you can see at very long range here, we're quite easily handling these targets. And I've cut this together from this first round here that we were playing. And there's a lot of situations where these guys are just sitting back. They're not pushing forward particularly. And uh, we're just picking them off at long range. They do start to make a move up here. And as you can see here, I'm getting on this target, but you see I'm getting that suppression kill assist there. So this is what you really want to be doing. I'm firing at these targets. Now, even if I don't necessarily kill them, there's two things that we're doing. One, we're suppressing them. And second of all, we're putting the pressure on them. Now, the next thing we want to think of the element is to reload safely and support your team. And I was supporting the team, as I say, by suppressing and taking down those targets. But also, it's important to, when you have an LMG, the increased reload time is going to be really dangerous for you. You don't want to just sit out in the open there without being able to return fire. So, you want to move away slightly, reload your gun, and then get back in the fight. And if you're working with a squad or a team, you want to let them know that you're reloading, because you're going to be down for a few seconds reloading. It's not like an assault rifle where you can just whack in another clip. You you really need to be able to take that time to reload. So it's worth saying to your guys, right, I'm reloading now. And here we can see the guys on the left here were communicating to me. We had two guys coming up there and I was finding them. Now this guy over here on the left, you see, I needed to make a small bipod adjustment in order to get onto this guy. They were saying, oh, there's a guy in the water and I'm pretty sure one of my guys, uh, Brutal or Black, said, is that guy still down? I said, I'll look. So I went over there, had a look. He was still in the water, took him out. So the role of LMG, as I say, is very much support. And you can see that I'm picking off plenty of kills here by having the discipline and role of staying back here. And also, those guys that are in front of me, they had missed these guys spawning past. I was calling my guys back. I was saying, guys, we've got two guys down at the tree. You need to get back here. And whilst they're moving back and helping me support that area, I'm laying down, suppressing fire, and taking out those targets. So having the discipline to stay back and not necessarily engage is really important. Our next role, the third role, is close range support and route control, okay? Now, this is on Metro again. Now, you might say, well, Metro is very bottlenecked, Luton. It's going to be obvious that you're going to be very easy able to take these people out. Well, I'm only using this round because it happened to be the most recent round that I've actually used LMGs on. But this could apply to almost any map, especially on rush mode. So what we're talking about with close range support, you can see my guys up here, the idea is that I'm at a medium range here for my targets, I'm not in complete close quarters, but I'm at a kind of medium range, much more so than the previous video we were seeing a minute ago, where I was firing at very, very long range. 
So with this, the power of the LMG is sh the sheer weight of rounds that you can lay down. And when you've got a bipod on here, because your recoil is going to be reduced, it's going to have a significant power against these enemy targets, especially because in the role that where I am here right now, I can see these targets so quickly and I can lay down fire on them so hard. And you can see here, two guys, two guys, third guy coming in here. Third one down, more guys coming in. And see, I've still got 100 rounds left in my clip here. So I've taken out three guys as they came out that corner. Now what was happening was I was preparing for these guys to come in here because I had my blue guys in front. I was looking at the minimap constantly. I was watching as they got taken out one by one and I was ready to lay down the fire on these guys as soon as they appeared. So I was prepared in my mind for them coming around this corner. I wasn't sort of waiting for the last second. I was looking at the map and I was waiting for them to come. I knew they were going to come around that corner and you can just lay the heavy fire down. And once you're getting suppressed and those rounds coming down onto you, you're really not going to be able to return fire. Now you can see I've waited until my guys have respawned moved up now it's my safe time to reload get a clip in and I'm prepared for anyone else coming down here now this was a good round for defense so I'm gonna break it down in another video and I'll explain the whole situation of what's going on here why I'm in this position and how we're defending against the team but first up let's look at the last thing do not be inflexible react to situations this is the fourth element now just because you've got a bipod LMG and you're a static player for the most part in terms of defense or potentially attack it doesn't mean that this is the only thing that you need to do if something else happens in the game you need to be able to react now look at the right hand side of my minimap here Trago I think he's going down in a second I've still got guys coming in here not the best control for me on that one guy but he went down all the same. Now, I'm still aware of other things that are going on in the game. I'm not tunnel vision on this guy. Tunnel vision, you see what I did there? You need to be aware of what's happening. Now, I was constantly communicating, and this is often the best map for illustrating this point. However, as I say, this kind of tactic will work equally on any rush map, really. They're all the same. This one just happens to have a slightly more specifically, uh, you know, narrow route to the target. But these guys are approaching this in wholly the wrong way. They're all going forward in the same point at the same time, and then they switch over to the other side. It's obviously going to create a killing ground. Really, what they should be doing is moving at multiple points at the same time, dropping smoke, throwing grenades, and trying to find the weak point to push those players through. But as it is, we've got them easily well covered. However, look what happens here, as is always the case in these games. At the last moment, we're going to see a huge push in the last sort of 13 to 10 tickets. This always happens, and people need to be aware of this. This is always the time to pull your players back to the bases, because this is always the time where they're going to throw at least two squads onto one base, and you're going to have some issues to deal with there. And often you can lose two bases in the last 10 tickets, because if one gets armed, everyone will panic, move over there, they leave the other one undefended, all of a sudden a couple of guys stealth in there, and with a little bit of luck, you never know, they might get it turned around. Now, as I say, coming into the end here, all of a sudden, Trey goes down, Jizzles is down, and we got four, look at this, four or five guys moving in here. I drop my position, moving over here. Now, look at this all of a sudden, the huge amount of recoil. I just cannot control because I don't have a foregrip on this LMG. However, do you have my backup pistol, and I'm moving to A to try and get in on this. Now, as I say, it's always going to be tricky. I start arm disarming, and unfortunately, I start putting the rounds in. Seth just takes me out. But you see, the point is, you're dropping that roll, you're getting in there. I managed to half clear that room. Look at Seth, he goes down here, and the guys go on to disarm that target and win the round. So, I hope this has been a good little overview of some ways that you can run with the LMG. As I say, this works on many, many rounds. I've done it on Karka and all sorts of different maps. You just need to find the right situation, the right role to play this one out. Hope this has been a bit of help, guys. And as I say, I will break down this full round and explain all. All of the different situations that are going on there it's definitely applicable to all sorts of different maps when you're running with one squad so i hope you've really enjoyed this one guys if you have please uh, give it a rate and share it around it always helps me out and i'll see you for some more battlefield 3 content aftermath's coming out next week i'll see you then